Hey, Bella fam. Welcome back to season three of Honest Conversations with Two Village Girls. I'm Serena. I'm Angie. This season, we are focusing on all of the common questions we've been asked about specific child behaviors. This week, we are answering the question, how do I address bullying? First, let's talk about why do children bully? Like, where do they get this idea from that they just got to pick on other people? I feel like, let me start, because I feel like the first (laughs) thing I want to say is that you know how we always tell y'all that children imitate you they mock you they copy you or whatever so maybe you know maybe that child seen somebody else picking on somebody and was just like oh let me try to do it Mm -hmm. it could have started from there they could have seen somebody else bullying and you know just picked up that bad habit Mm -hmm. and yeah soon they start walking like you talking like you and you Mm -hmm. don't even realize like they're they're paying attention but Mm -hmm suddenly they've got the same attitude that you talk to your girlfriends with or your guy friends with. Mm-hmm. And you try to that where come from. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Kids pick up on everything. Yeah. Or like not even, it, it won't even have to be the parents. Like kids pick up on other kids. They yeah, say, they see, other kids. Mm-hmm. Yep. they see kids out there pushing and pulling, trying to snatch toys from each other. And they're like, oh, where'd that work? They got the toy afterwards. Oh, yeah. Let me do it. Let me try. <laughs> yeah, um, that's one big thing. They they probably like seen other children do it, other people do it. Um, like one big thing, like they could probably see their parents do it. Their parents might be bullying them and they might be taking that anger out and going to school, taking that on other kids. You mm-hmm. never know. Oh, absolutely. It's just the behavior that if it's not nipped in the bud, it builds and builds. And usually it's a control thing. It's a, um, it's like bullying is like a way of like, oh, I'm in control of this situation or I'm the boss now, or I make the calls. I mean, I'm doing this, like you listen to me, you follow what I'm saying, what I'm doing. It just makes them feel like big and tall in, in areas they might not feel so like confident in themselves in. Mm-hmm. you know they always say like bullies need to look in the mirror and f- figure out what what's inside them that's making them feel like they need to take it out on other people yeah, basically yeah another I think another big thing could be like just try just to try to get some attention maybe like True. a lot of teachers give you know rewards to kids that are good and stuff like that that are you know speaking out or answering questions things like that you know kids get rewarded for by teachers but if that child isn't getting rewarded for nothing at all or anything maybe like to get attention they might like start fights or start uh arguments or start whatever with other kids just so that they can get like that attention from that teacher or whatever or they might that might can um happen at home like you know parents sometimes are extra extra busy sometimes they might not be able to give that child full attention all the time and stuff like that they go to school and that's what they do they act out because they aren't getting any attention Mm -hmm. and even more so um with that attention thing in the teachers like kids could just like pick on other kids saying like oh you know let me answer the questions and get my prizes or else and like and it just like it discourages them from getting attention because they're using that bullying to like make other people feel small so they feel bigger yeah they feel better about themselves Mm -hmm. what are the dangers of bullying Bro. There are many dangers of bullying, of course. <laughs> it can lead to so many things, like so many things, like suicide, depression, anxiety, yep. like so many, so many things. And I feel as though like <laughs> when bullies are in the action of like hurting other people, they might not be thinking about, you know, the long-term effects of bullying. They might just be thinking about now, like I'm going to hurt their feelings right now. I want to hurt them right now. Okay. Um but yeah it's definitely some like long-term effects of bullying absolutely it carries on into adulthood even like i don't know about you but like things i noticed even in college is like you can tell who was likely to be bullied and who was more likely to have been the bully in the past or even like meeting other students in college and the way they talk to me as it is as if I was less than them like it mm-hmm. it very much carries into mm-hmm. their attitude and that affects like a lot of people yeah. it's like okay now I feel like I'm 
like I'm anxious around other people because you know I like I was bullied as a kid and I get really like bad like social anxiety being around people that it's just like are you gonna like pick on me which is crazy as an adult but it's like how to handle the conversation with someone not knowing them because I don't know what your intentions are for me yeah. it's that mistrust misguidance mm-hmm. um manipulation yeah and like you said like just so many things can come from being bullied or from even being a bully bullies typically have their own like psychological absolutely um, mishaps that they're sitting there feeling some type of self like self-hurt self-hate that they're projecting onto others huh and yeah they could be depressed and like yeah i don't know like that's how they show it yeah basically plus bullies also get a lot of the attention just from peers typically the bullies are like the popular people yeah mm-hmm. that's people a, that was another that was one of my other points was going to be why, from why the children bully because you know they like they top of the school for real they're the popular ones those are the ones that can do no wrong in anyone else's eyes yeah because it's it's the one being bullied versus the bully the bully's posse the teacher's in half of the cases thinks that the bully is like the the model student Mm -hmm. and it just it's a cycle one thing i i saw once that i really think is a great idea is always teach a child like self-defense even if it's just as sport like karate taekwondo boxing like even if it's just for sport wrestling like those kind of things yeah it helps like children have like composure of themselves. It takes a lot of strength to really like want to hurt someone and know how to properly do so. I've never taken any of these classes, but I've seen so many different like talks about them because I'm interested in taking boxing. Mm-hmm. And it just takes so much composure and strength to really like know yourself and know how to control, like know that self-control mm-hmm. that self-defense teaches you. It's, it's a lot of like mind body power yeah. that goes into that and teaching self-defense can help against bullying and it can help with like just the emotional like mental side of it and like if you're being bullied to like process through those things that you're feeling yeah plus it's a good outlet I was I like to that too, yeah what what kind of self-defense would you ever would you be interested in taking I mean, I wanted to do some, like, kickboxing classes. Honestly, other than that, I really didn't have anything else I wanted to do because I'm not really, like, into any of those things. Uh, I remember we they had they was going to have this little class at UB for, like, women and uh, self-defense. I wanted to take that, but I, I don't, I don't know we even know what happened to that class. It got canceled. Not many people signed up for it, I believe. Hmm. I remember yeah. that. I'm like wrestling and all that no I probably wouldn't have did that that's like sports sports <laughs> but like I kind of want to do kickboxing and um just learn some basic self-defense techniques and stuff like that yeah that's how yeah. I feel about boxing knowing how to properly throw a punch and control my punch if needed yeah and kids can benefit from that like it just takes a lot to really get into these things so finding something that your child is like really interested in like it has a lot of benefits to to do these like self defense or just like these like sports like athletic. Yeah, I wish I had. I wish my grandma would have put me in like some extracurricular activities because that would probably would have been helpful. My church activities helped me out a lot. Mm-hmm. But we could have did some other things, you know, with our life, like learn how to swim, things sure. like that. <laughs> True. I wish. So now comes the question: How do we confront a bully? I guess this is we as in teachers or we as people and my first thought is like the fear of confronting a bully when I think about confronting a bully like right now I guess it depends on the situation but you know if it's always if it's a child in a, in a situation or whatever I'm probably gonna step in be- yeah when I was younger and like in school and watching like I, well, I was I was being bullied but like when watching other people being bullied like I wouldn't step in because like <laughs> I'm already getting bullied they just gonna continue to bully me so why would I step in and like help you know but sure. it is a big a big fear of, of people you know stepping in and confronting bullies but mm-hmm. I don't know true 
and like if you are afraid to confront the bully yourself like you can go to like whoever is in charge like the principal the your teacher um mm -hmm. goddess counselor anybody like that that's a good point there's other people there that can help you if you're you're feeling like you can't step in there's other people you can either anonymously like point out and say hey like you didn't hear this from me but so and such is doing this like if you don't want to get involved personally because you're afraid of backlash mm -hmm. or if you're like there's a situation where the backlash wouldn't be impacting you yeah. just going directly to those people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just go home and tell your parents your parents can't go tell true um people what are your thoughts on like families because i've seen a lot of like families that are like oh if they hit you you hit them back are oh, you talking about like parents teaching their child that like if someone's bullying you that it's okay to like fight back i guess i just feel like i agree kind of mm -hmm. because i guess i agree to an extent but i don't know i was nobody my parent didn't tell me that so i'm not sure oh sure it's a good question it's just that you know, I feel like a lot of people, a lot of parents just tell their ch child that because they don't want nobody like really, they don't want their child just sitting there getting picked on, getting hit on, getting whatever, like being like defenseless. Yeah. Like I feel like if when I become a parent and I teach my child, like I would probably say like, probably say something along, along those lines. Like if they, they hit you one time, tell them like, I don't like being hit. Like, I don't like that, whatever. Yeah. Cool. Like if they hit you again, after you then told them that, like, what else can you do? Yeah. I mean, like, maybe I'll say you can tell the teacher or whatever. But then, like, what if the teacher doesn't do anything and the child still hit my child? Like, I don't, I don't want you to sit there and not defend yourself. Absolutely. So, like I guess it just depends. I like the way you worded that, too. You mm -hmm. basically went back to, like, our toolkit, like, giving them the tools to, like, handle the situation. Like, if it escalates to that point, mm -hmm. not just immediately, you hit me, you get hit back yeah like just trying to give them the tools to like handle it like okay we'll talk about it we'll try and figure out what the issue is yeah because i mean like I, I think i'm I'm just not a violent person so like mm -hmm. i can't really teach my child to be violent because that's not how i am mm -hmm. but yeah at a certain time amount of time telling somebody like what else can you say you're not hearing what's coming out my mouth so yeah same honestly I feel like I guess that goes back to like the self-defense classes mm -hmm. or some kind of like athletic mm -hmm. give them the resources educate teach them how to definitely educate yeah educate them um talk to them model behaviors so like if you want to like <laughs> like uh, model the behavior you want your child to follow like if mm -hmm. you don't really want your child to hit bullying model respectful behaviors model loving behaviors i don't know how to yeah. really put it but model good behaviors that your child will go out and do they will go out and help people instead of harm people like you model those behaviors like mommy don't hurt people why should i absolutely and families and villa fam if if you find out that your child is harm is bullying another child this is your time this is not you it doesn't reflect poorly on you this is your time to reevaluate what's going on in your child's life because maybe it's something that's happening in school and they've picked up on these behaviors it's time to reevaluate like what your child is, is seeing and observing and figure out what they need in order to in order to lose the negative behavior because ultimately like the goal is for all kids to have a great experience in school yeah and they should be all one team instead of against each other like they're all learning together it's a mm -hmm. it's an environment that they're all they all should be comfortable in yeah and we as teachers as child care professionals we do the best we can from our side to try and avoid that mm -hmm. unfortunately some things do slip through the cracks so providing those kids that are bullies with the tools as well Yes. To handle yeah. their own upsets and frustrations and whatever they're going through in their life yeah. that's causing this reaction. Absolutely. I agree with that, um, Jefferson. Thank you. Because true, they like regardless if they believe or not, they're still a child. And yeah. I always I really always believe like it's a reason 
to why you're you're acting the way you are and like I know we have well, I know we have a psych background and stuff like that so we mm-hmm. probably can put those things together but like as a parent like you can tell you can you can see if something's wrong and like yeah we we, we are talking from a teacher's perspective so as you know teachers and child care providers out there y'all should know y'all y'all children that's in your classroom as well too like absolutely y'all should be able to tell like when you know one of your students is off having a bad day or your child is acting out like something might be going on at home something might be going on in the classroom that you don't know about something might be going on who knows the child might not be able to talk to parents at home mm-hmm. I don't know like I feel like we all teachers are all are a like should be a safe place for kids to come talk to too as you know parents are and you know relatives sometimes stuff like that oh absolutely Thanks for tuning in again to another episode with Two Village Girls. Please subscribe to our channel if you are new. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them down below. Also, go ahead and hit the bell to get notified when new videos drop. Please follow us on all our social medias, which will be listed in the description box below. As always, we want to send you out with some positive vibes to get you through the rest of your week. And this week's inspirational quote is by an unknown author. And they say, you can't fix yourself by breaking someone else. Thank you, Villa fam. Bye. Bye.